Uh, hello, everyone. Uh, thank you for being here. Um, uh, I'm a Yutoro Hayakawa. Um, came from the Japan, uh, Keio University. Um, today, I will talk about the, my recent work, uh, eBPF implementation for FreeBSD. Uh, so first, uh, let me um, explain by myself. Um, my name is Yutoro Hayakawa, and the affiliation is the Keio University, Japan. Um, I am a master's student, um, and my research topic is the, almost about the networking, um, SDN and NFP, uh, and the, the some operating system things. Um, the mysterious thing is the, um, I'm now on the GSOC, um, Google Summer of Code, um, and the, what I'm, I will talk um, from now is what I'm doing for the, for the Google Summer of, co Google Summer of Code. And, <laughs> and I am now on job hunting, so um, if you like this talk, please hire me. <laughs> <laughs> so let's start. And uh, here um, we have the today's agenda. The first, uh, I will talk, um, talk to you about the Linux ABPF, um, which stands for the Extended Burger Bucket Feature, um, which is a very hot topic among the community, uh, especially for the networking guys. Um, and before talking about my work, uh, um, let me explain about the, what the ABPF is um, and uh, how it is useful for the Linux. Um, and what kind of the tools are on the there, or, and so on. Um, and the second, um, uh, I will talk about what I'm doing, um, ABPF implementation for FreeBSD. Um, and uh, what kind of the design decision I made, and, and what's the current status, and what is the difference, be difference between the Linux ABPF. And, and I will show you some performance number at last and the, and the analysis about it. Um, and the third, uh, I will show you the concrete use case for the, um, the eBPF for FreeBSD. The, I chose the Valve switch, uh, which is a very fast and um, modular in kernel software switch um, based on the NetMap API um, as the first target for my work. Um, and uh, I wrote the extension module for the enhancing the eBPF programmability to the Valve switch, uh, which is called Valve BPF. And also, also in here, I will show you the result of the initial perform, performance measurement, uh, and uh, and at, at last, I will, I will do the live demo. Uh, hopefully, it works. Uh, and so, let's start with the first topic: the Linux eBPF to basic. Um, so, the what's the, what's eBPF? Uh, it stands for the Extended Berkeley Bucket Filter. The, as you know, the, the previous or the classical um, BPF was the packet tapping and the packet filtering framework. Um, it basic, um, basically, uh, you write the, some kind of the assembly-like language um, and insert it into the kernel and attach it, to, attach it to the network devices and tap the packet and filter out the, the unimportant um, packet for your application, insert the kernel. Um, and this reduced the uh, overhead of the copy among the user space and the kernel space. And so it improves the performance of the application like the TCP damp or Wireshark and such, such kind of the application, um, packet monitoring application. Um, so the recently, the Linux extended that um, specification and the instruction set architect uh, architecture, and uh, it becomes more more generic one. A gener um, it becomes more generic um, a framework. Um, the, now the instruction set is more closer to the modern CPU instruction set architecture. They have 11 re registers for the uh, 64 registers, uh, and uh, the instruction was increased, uh, and uh, they defined the C-Conlink convention, and they, uh, and they implement the LLVM backend for the BPF. So it means that you don't have to write um, the assembly or the BPF bytecode uh, by, by yourself. Um, uh, instead of it, you can just use the C language for writing the eBPF program. Um, the what that makes eBPF more general purpose framework is the call instruction 
Um, since they have C calling convention, so they can seamlessly call external kernel function uh, from the eBPF um, seamlessly. Um, and of course, the callable function are um, restricted. Um, and, <coughs> and by using it, um, eBPF program uh, can be integrated with the, the kernel infrastructure for the, uh, for the eBPF, such as, such as maps. And the maps are a simple in kernel uh, key value store, um, which can be manipulated from the EVPF from um, through the <coughs> through the core instruction, and uh, they it is also can can be manipulated from the user space through the BPF system call. Um, and uh, there are several kinds of the maps uh, are prepared in the kernel, and such like the array map or the hash table map, such kind. Or the uh, or the uh, try map uh, such kind of the data structure are prepared for the interface. Um, in conjunction with the maps, um, eBPF can um, keep the status among the multiple goals, um, unlike the unlike the stateless um, classical eBPF um, classical BPF. Um, the another example for the call instruction is they can write the data to the tracing buffer. Um, it is really useful for for the debugging or the the tracing use cases. Um, I will talk uh, it, uh, talk about it later. Um, and for example, the, another case is the that they can take the timestamp for the the CPU core currently they are running, um, and so on. The, it's uh, quite flexible compared to the classical BPF. So. Um, and the performance was also improved by the by the JIT compiler or the static code analysis. Especially the static code analysis is um, important for the safety because um, since the, the eBPF program uh, will be run in, inside the kernel, so we need to guarantee that the um, the pro uh, program doesn't um, hangs or the crashes the kernel. So um, the static code analysis. Um, Finds the program which contains the loops or the or the invariant memory access or the out of out of out of range jump or um, such such kind of the malicious um, behavior in the statical way. So the the important point is um, it is statical. So um, it avoids the dynamic checking of the the program um, and improves the performance. So that is the, um, and they um, they also defined the the dedicated system call for the for the BPF systems. Um, we can load the program through that system call, or the create the maps, or the manipulate in the maps through that system call. So this is the brief overview of the the Linux the BPF. So what kind of the use cases are there? Um, uh, there are a lot of uh, use cases, uh, especially for the networking use cases, it, it's quite a lot. Um, but I pick, picked up two use cases from that. So the first use case is the dynamic tracing. Um, they use the eBPF as a backend of the dynamic tracing. Um, so the tracing by the packet filter uh, sounds really strange, but the, the, we don't have to uh, surprise about that because the what Tracing by that kind of the VM is what the D-trace is um, doing behind the D-language. D so, <clears throat> and originally, the, originally the Linux had some tracing tools, but the the way to the tracing um, is basically the writing the kernel module. So, and generally it is painful for the users. So. So they now they have the tracing facility with the, with the eBPF and in conjunction with the external use useful tools and it becomes a thing um, mostly comparable with the D-trace in the Linux in Linux community. Um, so here we can see the famous, um, famous example of the dynamic tracing. Uh, the, see the, you can see the distribution of the um, block I/O, and the, the here is a useful, uh, useful 
the maps of the two useful tools um, provided by the, the brand and uh, of course they, uh, they have Ponycon. Uh, I didn't know about the, that culture, but <coughs> yeah. So the second use case is the XDB. Um, it stands for the Express Data Bus. Um, XDP is a Linux way to do the high performance um, packet processing. Um, the high performance packet IO framework, um, our existing high performance packet framework such as the DPDK or the NetMap um, takes the similar approach to achieve better performance which is called kernel bypass. Um, the essential um, concept of them is improve the performance by reducing the, the <coughs> processing between the packet I.O. and the packet processor. So, the, so the, they end up in the bypass the kernel protocol stack which is too heavy for the fast packet processing and, and export the packet buffer di directly to the user space or the, even the, use the U.I.O. and the, and implement uh, the device driver on, on the user space. Um, however, Linux people didn't like the kernel bypass, um, and instead, what they did was the hook and the process the the packet uh, right after the reception inside the NIC driver uh, using the ABPF. Um, this is also an approach to redu reduce the processing between the I/O and the, the packet processor. And the so essential thing is the same. Um, so the Facebook already uh, use it um, in the production system, and they use it for the DDoS mitigation or the load balancing. And the Sricata uh, famous IPS and IDS implementation is now supports the XDP as a backend. The XDP is a um, a um, very hot topic among the Linux networking community for, for these days. Um, so, the, and the, another um, interesting thing is in here is they have hardware offload. Um, the Netronome Agerio uh, series of the NIX um, can op um, support the offloading of the XDP program to their NIC. So the, this means that we can process the packet very, um, in very fast. Um, without consuming the, the whole CPU uh, inside the NIC. And that's quite interesting. So the, the next thing is the Turing um, around, around the ABPF. Uh, now since the Linux kernel provides the only um, very primitive way to interact with the ABPF systems, um, so the using it directly um, is quite painful for the users. Um, so the, so the Turing is very important for them. Now I pick up some, more, some of the tools around the ABPF, uh, which seems interesting for the ABP, um, sorry, um, BSD community. Now, the first one is the BCC. Um, th this, is, uh, this stands for the BPF compiler corrections. This is a compiler driver and the, the useful correction of the libraries uh, for the ABPF. Um, they provide us the way to deal with the restricted C. Uh, as I said before, the, we can write the EBPF program in C, but <coughs> um, its C is um, quite um, restricted because we can't use the loop or, or the, um, we need to put some metadata to the specific sections. So, so that's kind of the, the complex thing since um, uh, is needed for writing the EBPF program. Um, the deal is the deal is that is a um, little painful for the users. So the, they provide us the many uh, useful macros or or the syntax sugar for that. Um, and uh, they also provide us the front end for the various language like the the of course the C or the P4. Uh, the P4 is the domain specific language to, to represent, represent the behavior of the network data plane. Um, and uh, and uh, of course, the, they can deal with the, the L file generated from, from the compiler, so we, need, we, don't need to, we don't need to parse the L by, them, by ourselves. Um, and the uh, useful libraries for interacting with maps is already also available. And, uh, some language bindings such as the Python or the C++ or Lua um, is 
<coughs> is also provided by the by the part of the BCC. And so here we have the some example code uh, of the BCC uh, Python script. Um, so here we can see the embedded C uh, inside the inside the Python script. Um, this C traces the block I/O of the, the block table system, take the <coughs> store the uh, distribution of the uh, the block size uh, into into the map. Uh, this BPF histo histogram um, macro defines defines the array map uh, and the. Uh, the program store uh, stores the distribution of the block size into that. Um, if um, when we instantiate that BPF object, um, then it um, calls the the C rank behind that, and the it compiled into the BPF bytecode and automatically loaded into the kernel. Um, and wait for a second, um, and uh, after that we can. Um, we can see the uh, see the see the map from the from the user space in this kind of the the easy syntax, um, and the output of this program is like this. Uh, and the, the another tool is the PLY, um, is the tracing front end, which is heavily inspired by the D language. Um, the here, we, um, here we can see the D-trace one-liner, which uh, counts the number of the system calls. And uh, the, here um, we have the, the equivalent um, one-liner in the PLY. Um, um, it's very similar, right? And, uh, and the, what they can do is almost comparable with the, with the D-trace. So the uh, last uh, last tool I introduce is a BP filter. Um, it is still on the RSD, but the, it's really interesting. The, in my understanding, um, the IP table <coughs> BP filter is the IP tables which uses the XDP as a backend. Um, so the existing IP tables um, is not so fast. So. <coughs> The, using the XDP as a backend and guarantees the more, more, more and more performance. Um, and the, the good point in here is the they can transfer into Axel the existing IP tables. And uh, this graph shows us the performance number um, <coughs> by the by the network. Um, the yellow bar shows the the about the legacy IP tables um, performance. Um, it is the 10.9 million packets per second for the for the minimum packet size, um, and the BP filter with the XDP, um, the graver um, shows the 38.7 per, um, million packets per second, and uh, as I said before, the uh, the XDP has the hardware overloading, and uh, the Netherman also measure the the performance of the BP filter for the um, hardware overloading. Um, and they uh, they say that they achieved the the wire rate of the 40 gig Ethernet um, without consuming the whole, whole CPU, so it's quite amazing. That's just wrong, right? Hmm? That's just wrong. Uh, no, um, the simple. Uh, yeah, uh, yeah. So yeah, ex exactly. Um, just for the drops, um, simple filtering. Yeah, it's done by um, by the network code. And, and, but then it's stateless or still stateful? Uh, it can be stateful by using the map. So stateful and thus filtering on the network card? Yes. Okay. That sounds cool. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, recent, um, recently there is um, some kind of that kind of the NIC. Um, um, NIC product is. Um, yeah, Nick Brothers in the on the on the market. Um, this it is called Smart Nick or something like that. Um, 
And for the, con um, the conclusion for this section is the recent Linux implement implements a lot of the interesting features using ABPF, and like the dynamic tracing or the very fast packet processing framework, um, XDP, um, and so on. And the community also introduced a lot of um, interesting tools like the PCC or PLY or the PP filter. Um, for more inf information uh, about the Linux ABPF, like, please visit this uh, this blog post. Um, this is created by the very passionate um, guy um, for the ABPF, and uh, it is a very really useful collection of links. So, if you want to um, get some get some ABPF related information, uh, please visit this this blog post. It's quite useful. So now let's go to the second agenda: um, ABPF implementation for the FreeBSD. Um, and this is what I'm doing um, for the project of the Google Summer of Code. Um, so, <clears throat> and the, I imported the the ABPF to to the FreeBSD. Um, so, um, my implementation is called generic ABPF. Um, actually, it is not only for the FreeBSD. Um, it's generalized multi-platform ABPF implementation actually. Um, the current phase supports the FreeBSD user space and the kernel space, uh, and the Linux user space, kernel space, and the Mac OS user space. Um, it only requires about uh, 200 lines of Google code for each platform. Um, so almost all of the, the code is shared among the, among the platform. So, um, and uh, we have interpreter and the JIT compiler for the x8664 based on the UBPF. Um, UBPF is originally uh, uh, user space implementation. Um, for, uh, it's Apache licensed. Um, I modified it to run on the kernel and uh, ported it to the FreeBSD. And um, uh, we uh, also have maps which uses TomiDS as a backend. Um, TomiDS is quite I think quite uh, quite popular <coughs> library of the the various data structures such as the hash table uh, or the try. And unfortunately, the verifier uh, static code analyzer uh, is not yet implemented. It's the hardest part of the the EPPA implementation, I think. Um, the source code is available on, the, on my GitHub, so uh, please um, visit it. Um, if you have, uh, if you're interested in, in, in that, <coughs> so the current status is the the we have Splash Dev EBPF plus I/O control interface, and this is actually actually the, uh, the alternative of the Linux BPS system call. Um, the, what they do is almost same: um, load the program into the kernel and uh, create the and the manipulate the maps and. The, uh, run the run simple test ins um, inside the kernel. Um, yes, <coughs> and the interpreter and the JIT compiler for the x86-64 is <coughs> almost done, but the most of the <coughs> uh, instructions uh, implemented, but the the sum of the instructions such as the atomic and exchange add in um, instruction such such kind of the instruction is also still missing. But we can implement it soon. Um, and the RA and the hash table maps is also available. And here we have the um, initial performance measurement for the hash table, hash table map. Um, and we, uh, I measured the total amount of the uh, time to insert the objects into the map. Uh, X axis shows the number of the object, and the Y axis shows the shows the total amount of the time. Um, and uh, as we, as you can see, the green line and the orange line. The green line is the Linux nat native hash table map, um, and the orange line is the is the generic ABPF for the Linux. Um, those two are almost comparable, as you see. Um, but the the blue line, the generic ABPF for the FreeBSD, um, is slower than them. Um, the lower is better in this graph, so it's slower than the Linux ABPF. Uh, or the generic GBPF for the Linux, in case of the FreeBSD FreeBSD kernel. So um, I measured it on the same machine. So the, what makes difference 
um, is uh, the question. So, so uh, uh, to make sure that uh, I did some simple <coughs> experiment, um, which simply returns the immediately from the IO control handler. Since the um, the most of the code um, is shared among among the among the platform in my generic PPF implementation, so that so the only um, difference between the platform is the IO control interface or the the operating system specific um, operations such as the memory allocation or the logs. <coughs> um, and at first, I did some uh, some simple <coughs> measurement, and that simply returns the immediate from the IO control handler and uh, the the latency of the IO control. Um, as a result of this <coughs> measurement, um, I I find out that the, about the 85 percent of the difference comes from the IO control. Um, but the I I'm not yet do the precise analysis for this uh, this. This result. So uh, uh, let me let me see that uh, um, in the future, as a future work. Um, and the, let's go to the last um, agenda, um, Valley BPF. And this is, I will explain about the concrete use case for the the generic BPF and for the FreeBSD. So the first, let me explain about the Valley. Um, it, which stands for the, the virtual local Ethernet is a very fast and uh, modular software switch, uh, which is also known as the end switch uh, in the academic context. Um, the great thing um, for the ballet is it's really hard, very fast. Um, it can easily achieve the wire rate for the 10 gig or the 40, uh, even for the 25 gig <coughs> gig NICs um, and the the one more cool thing is that we can um, write a module uh, and uh, change the behavior of the switch um, by writing the kernel module. Um, the, kernel mo the kernel module is uh, um, consists of the single function uh, which takes the takes the packet buffer or some other metadata as an argument and uh, returns the, the the destination port number. Uh, it's quite simple, um, but the uh, yeah, it's quite simple, uh, simple and uh, useful. Um, personally, I'm I'm using I'm using the body as a prototyping tool of my research, um, and it's very useful. But the only bad thing is that I need to write the write the kernel module. It's it's generally painful, right? So. So the, I implemented the body BPF for solving that problem. Um, Valley um, BPF is a Valley module which enhances the eBPF programmability to the Valley software switch. Um, uh, what we need to do is the um, same as the, uh, the uh, row virus module. Um, it just takes the pocket buffer as an um, input and the output of the destination port number. Um, Instead of the uh, loading the row um, row <coughs> valley module, um, uh, you can uh, load the valley bpf dot uh, module into the kernel, and after that um, you load the eBPF program into the kernel and attach it to the body, um, and that and that all works. So, and uh, here um, we have uh, some initial performance number of the valley bpf. Um, I measured the throughput of the and uh, throughput of two switching logic. Uh, first one is the learning bridge, uh, and the second one um, is a uh, no logic, which is just for the packets uh, left to right, and just just for the packet uh, left to right. Yes, <coughs> and uh, <coughs> the performance difference of the no logic cases show you the pure uh, cost of the eBPF programmability. Right, um, and uh, it shows us the four million packet per, se per second of the performance penalty. Um, it currently seems quite large, um, but I'm quite sure we can um, we can improve it um, in the future. And for the learning bridge, bridge case, uh, we see the significant about uh, about nine million packet per second um, performance penalty. Um, 
Now, I also um, it is probably due to uh, due to the my my uh, my my module implementation uh, since I compared it against the default body uh, soft, um, default um, body module, which is really um, uh, Really uh, optimized for the perf for the performance, and so m m probably my implementation is poor and uh, become this kind of the <coughs> this kind of the performance penalty. Um, I'm quite sure to I can improve it in the future. So uh, I I I'll do the, some simple demonstration for the valid BPF in here. Um, let me prepare that. Can you see that? It's a li little small. Oh. So now it seems okay. Okay? So the, I will show you the, the simple um, valid BPF module, which do which does the <coughs> um, IP, um, <coughs> IP address filtering. Um, so here, Here I have the the bodies, uh, um, the bodies which which is, which is called body zero, and uh, I attach the two virtual ports for the for that switch, and uh, the demo and demo I will demonstrate the uh, I will I will generate the packet from the virtual port zero and uh, receive it uh, on the virtual virtual port one, um, so. Let's start the pocket generator. Pocket, uh, I will generate the pocket um, with the the and the set of um, destination IP address to the 10.0.10.1. Point point um, the generator is started, and the rest, I will activate the receiver. So uh, currently, you can't see um, you can't see any pockets in the receiver side because the by default the body body PPL does not sync. Uh, the uh, and the um, ABPF and the ABPF um, um, body BPF modules they already already loaded into the kernel, um, and so. Let's load the. Uh, okay, so before that, let me show you the the PPF program. Uh, so here we have the the simple BPF program, which parse the Ethernet header and uh, extract the IP header. <clears throat> and uh, look up the map, um, and uh, the map map definition is here. The, this map is a hash table map to manage the blacklist of the IP address. Um, so the we <coughs> look up the map in here, and if if the entry is in the blacklist, um, then the, then drop the packet. Okay, so. So let's start the bar BPF. So now um, the the bar um, BP, uh, eBPF program is loaded into the kernel, um, and uh, you can see the receiver said um, is receiving the packet, um, and uh, and uh, this ab application invokes the simple shell uh, after activation, and 
when I type the IP address to here, the this uh, this shell dynamically installs the uh, rules to uh, rules to the to the map um, and uh, at the hope free um, the 10.0.7.1 will be blacklisted and uh, and the traffic will stop. Uh, so uh, okay uh, okay it worked. <laughs> and so as you can see um, the the um, rule is dynamically installed into the map and uh, and the uh, traffic uh, stops. Um, um, that's it, and this is the end of my demo. And let's okay, let's activate the application. Yes. So the uh, since the uh, maps or the ABPF program is bounded to and bounded to the file descriptor, the, their lifetime is. Uh, uh, same as the process, so that when I when I reboot the process, the the, the flow on um, the packet will uh, still uh, start it to the fl uh, flowing again. Uh, so that's it. Let's go back to slide. So here I have miscellaneous ideas um, for how we can apply the, the eBPF to the, to the FreeBSD. Um, uh, for the networking things, the NG eBPF, the network module for eBPF is um, possible, I think. Uh, and the XDP emulator, uh, um, which um, now we can, um, for example, we can we can bring the XDP program from the Linux and the Linux and uh, uh, load uh, uh, load that program to the XDP emulator. That we can we can run the XDP like um, mechanism inside the FreeBSD. Um, that may be possible. Uh, and uh, also the supporting the hardware offload offloading um, is an interesting thing I think. And uh, yeah, conjunction with the security um, framework such as the Capsicum is is um, also um, interesting for uh, use cases for the FreeBSD I think. So the conclusion for this um, talk is the eBPF is a hot technology among the Linux community, and they introduced uh, a lot of interesting features and useful tools for, for around that. Uh, and the eBPF implementation for the FreeBSD is now going on uh, as a part of the, the GSOC project. Uh, and the Bali BPF is an uh, extension module which enhances eBPF programmability to Bali. Um, uh, which improves the program ability and greatly improves the programmability of the body switch. Um, that's um, that's all. Uh, thank you for listening. Any other questions? Um, no, BCC itself is not a LLVM um, backend. There is an EBPF backend for LLVM, right? Yes. And we have LLVM in the tree. Yes. So maybe it would work to bring that in would be good for this effort as well. Yes, um, I already did that work, and I have I already have patch in my in my GitHub. So uh, in my, uh, at least in my tree, um, the the built-in LLVM. Um, for the for the free BSD has the the BPF backend, so if you are interested in that kind of the thing, um, please let me know. The other thing that I really explored with all, but it might be interesting, is that you might be able to attach eBPF programs to D-Phrase Yes, um, yes, um, the that kind of thing is the. Uh, the Linux do um, does such kind of such kind of thing. It is so. I think it is one option to for the free BSD. Yes. Yes.
Thank you. <laughs> I'm trying to do that. <laughs> you the verifiers. I, I believe you found your mentor. <laughs> Three. What is the biggest difficulty to bring the delegator from Linux into BSD? Um, biggest, biggest what? Sorry. Difficulty. A difficulty. Ah, okay. Um, the the most difficult thing is verifier, I think, um, because the ver um, we need to verify the the program um, uh, for uh, for for each attach point in the in the kernel. So we need to write the, the verifier for, for the each use cases. So that means that we can't um, Im simply import the Linux verifier to the FreeBSD and use it. We can't do that. So um, implementing the verifier is um, more um, most um, difficult thing, I think. Any other questions? Okay, so thank you for listening.